Alrighty peeps, welcome back. Today, we're in for something pretty special. We're gonna be trying to survive 100 days inside of Better Minecraft Hardcore. Now, if for whatever reason you don't know what Better Minecraft is, let me give you a quick rundown. Better Minecraft is a very, and I mean very, heavily modded version of the vanilla game, with completely new biomes, not just in the overworld, but in the nether and the end too. As well as a plethora of new mobs, such as mammoths, dragons, and whatever the hell this thing is. There's also a ton of other cool and useful features such as upgraded versions of all the base game structures and new dungeons to explore and conquer. So, now that we're all caught up to speed, I invite you to join me on the craziest adventure yet as we attempt to survive 100 days in the breathtaking mod pack that is better Minecraft. So, grab a snack, sit back, and let's go. So starting things out on day one, our first day on this very new journey, the game starts out in the exact same way, by me grabbing some wood to make some wooden tools and then grabbing some stone to make some stone tools. And I'm not gonna lie, initially I'm not feeling too overwhelmed by mods just yet, but I have a feeling that's gonna change really soon because the next tree I went to chop down came down in one swift whack. Wood leaves everything, just poof, gone in one go. And now I'm a big fan of this mod and uh, it was gonna make doing anything with wood so much easier. Anyways, after starting off my career as the world's most efficient lumberjack and cutting down more trees than I care to admit, I ended up spotting a duck which I was going to dispatch for food but realised that it had a family so uh, I left it be. Psych, that's not how things work around here, okay? This is a dog eat dog world. Uh, well, no, when you think about it, it's more like a man eat duck world but then also it's really not because all it dropped was a feather so that was no help to me and I guess that it's a man eat nothing world right now. Duck incident aside, I went out in search of some real food so that I don't start starving out here in this massive new world, and actually stumbled across some chickens that were so kind enough to give me their meat. And I also spotted a couple of wild carrots out here and proceeded to eat one. Mmm, yummy. After eating my hefty meal of singular carrot, I decided to head out in search of an area where we can spend the first few days to gear up and grab the necessary materials to build a real base later down the line. So I headed out and after traversing a jungle and stealing a melon, I came across this lone structure in the middle of this little river right here. So I cautiously made my way over to it and down the ladder and was very pleasantly surprised to find a villager down here. In fact, there was an entire village down here with a load of food and even some iron equipment for me. So I did what any logical thinking human being would do in this situation and went around looting everything I could from this place. And I managed to get into a fight with the chest. Uh, yeah, a literal chest just started snapping at me. So I gave him a good bonking and continued to pillage the village. After looting around for a while, I stole myself away in this chest right here, repaired a couple of iron shovels, and then went to explore the rest of the village. And, well, I was actually surprised on how big this place was. It was pretty impressive. I mean, they even had a cat down here, for Christ's sakes. A literal cat. Anyways, I used their campfires to cook myself some potatoes for free and ended up finding a crossbow in this chest right here. So I grabbed that and waited for my potatoes to cook and once they were ready, I made my way back to the surface to check if it was night. And it was, so I headed back to my room and began a little mine down here because I mean, what else is there to do on the first night? But I had far from a lucrative mining session because all I found really was a big old vein of coal, a couple little bits of iron and some marble that I really liked. So I grabbed some of that to use on my house later. Anyways, on the morning of day two, I made myself a furnace, smelted down my iron into a shield and pickaxe, then headed back to the surface to set out exploring some more, but not before I set a little waypoint back to the village. You see, I am a smart guy sometimes. So I set out in search of really anything interesting, but really didn't think I'd have to look far in this mod pack, and uh, well, I was right, because I found this blue and pink beach that just looked absolutely amazing just around the corner. And then I spotted these absolutely insanely huge arch things in the water that just looked absolutely crazy. But then I couldn't help myself and I chopped down one of these big trees right here and oh, it, it was just so satisfying. And it actually gave me this ebony wood, which looked really, really good actually. I'm really excited to build with this stuff. Anyways, I spotted myself a little ruined portal out in the distance, so I made my way over to it and looted up the chest to find some pretty okay stuff. But then I couldn't believe my eyes because behind me, there was another village. So I immediately began heading over to it to raid all of its goodies, of which there were many. And, well, you aren't going to believe this, but right behind it, there was another village. However, once I arrived at this one, I saw some villagers that had, like, armed guards and decided it best to leave this village alone for now. But as I was beginning to leave the village, I saw this massive jungle temple thingy off in the distance that I decided to add a waypoint on. 
That way we can come back later and see what lurks within it. Anyways, I headed back to the non-guarded village to finish off looting everything up and then headed back to my home village, dispatching a couple of cows in the process and also finding another temple. Once I got home, I organized the day's loot, cut up some fish and got to work on mining through another night in search of some iron for better gear. And well, I found a couple of pieces of iron before uncovering this massive cave full of every ore imaginable. We had gold, we had lapis, we had iron, we had redstone and even diamonds. Woo! Diamonds on night two, baby, let's go! Now, I did only decide to grab the diamonds that were close to my staircase, so I only got two, but hey, I'll take it. After grabbing the diamonds, I headed back home to make myself some new gear, and now you may be thinking, Poppers, diamonds on day two is kind of OP, and well, I would normally agree with you, but in this mod pack, I would say they're a nice bonus to have this early, but far far from OP. So by the morning of day three, we were now fully kitted out in iron armor, so I decided to go and give one of those jungle temple thingies a visit to see what lurks within. So I left the safety of my home and headed over to the closest one, encountering a wild capybara on my way over there that I quickly put an end to because god, I, I just, I hate those things, I hate them, I see them everywhere, I hate them. Anyways, I made my way inside the temple, breaking a mob spawner in the process, and as I moved further and further in, I got a little bit greedy and almost fell to my crispy 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 demise in this lava trap right here. So yeah, maybe I should be a little bit more careful. So as I made my way deeper and deeper through the winding hallways of this temple, I uh, ran into some more spawners and some husks, as well as a chest with some gold and emerald in it, but that's really all that was here. I was kind of disappointed, so I decided to head over to the bigger one and entered from the bottom this time because there's nothing at the top layer. And oh boy, was this temple good to me, okay? First off, we found some gold and iron, which was already better than the smaller one, but after dealing with two zombie villagers and breaking their spawner, we found a chest full of diamonds, all right? We ended up with 11 diamonds from this temple and an efficiency 3 buck. So overall, I would say coming here was a pretty good idea considering how easy it was to complete and how much loot I got for my work. Anyways, after making my way out of the temple, I bonked some cows for some leather and then made my way back through the rain all the way to my home village where I made myself a diamond shield and a full set of diamonds tools before finally getting a good night's rest. But real quick before we move on to day 4, it's that time again for me to tell you about G Fuel and the fact that you can get 30% off when you use code POPPERS or the link in the top right of the screen and in the description down below. Now this offer does end on the 25th so go and grab your 30% off today. Oh, and also, this month's pick from me has to be Blue Ice. There's honestly nothing better on a hot summer's day when you're feeling down and tired than a nice, cold, refreshing Blue Ice. Oh, it is just so good. Anyways, go grab yourself some energy, and now, back onto the video. Now, waking up on day four, I started out the day by tidying and organizing my storage properly because I'm gonna start getting ready to build my own home soon, and I only wanna take with me what I need and not have a load of junk laying around. So after spending like 5 minutes sorting that out, I added efficiency 5 to my shiny new diamond pick, made some gapples and a bow, and now I was feeling pretty kitted out, and dare I say, I felt kind of safe. Anyways, I headed out to grab some more ebony wood because I really liked it, and was 100%ly planning to build with it. After grabbing enough of the ebony wood, I stumbled my way into a cherry blossom forest and also grabbed some of that wood too, and decided that this is probably going to be the place where we're going to build our base. So I got to work on clearing out a little area, that way when it came to building it wouldn't be so tedious to level everything out. And yeah, I'm going to be planting a lot of cherry blossom trees in place of these basic looking oak ones. Anyways, after a while of leveling out the terrain, it got dark, so I headed back to the village and spent the night thinking of how I wanted my new base to look. And on the morning of day 5, I set out to stack up on some of the materials we were going to need to start building. That way we could move out of this tiny little village room ASAP. So I started things out back down the mine when I grabbed some andesite and a ton of the marble that I love so much, before heading to the surface to grab some plain old oak wood which I managed to get from these here crimson trees, so uh, they were pretty helpful. After gathering all the oak wood I needed, I stored it away in this chest and went to check out a barred off section of the village because I'd heard some banging coming from there earlier and really wanted to go and check it out. And well, I immediately found the problem. It was a zombie villager and a baby creeper that decided to explode on me. Thank God I have this diamond shield, eh? After dealing with our uninvited guests, I went around looting whatever was left behind in this abandoned segment of the village and well, the loot wasn't great, but hey, we did a good deed today and who knows, maybe we'll bring this segment of the village back to life. But that's a problem for later, because right now it's getting blocked off again and I'm going straight to bed. Okay, so when I awoke on day 6, I found a little green goblin guy just chilling in my room and decided to trade with him. I grabbed myself some sponge for in case I do anything with water, and then also picked myself up a couple of enderpearls and some blaze rods, because why not, they're just gonna save me time. 
anyways, after the pleasant morning spent with the goblin trader, I got to work on some more leveling and planning of the new base over in the cherry blossom biome, and oh boy, have I got big plans for this base. Mm -mm, it's gonna look good. Oh, and also whilst I was leveling out, I figured out how to get the inventory thing up my screen, so uh, there you go, it's, it's gone now. I finally have like half my screen back. Now, it actually ended up taking me all day to level this stuff out, and I made the conscious decision to keep going through the night, and, uh, well, other than sniping a witch and booping a couple of zombies, it was a pretty peaceful and productive night. And before I knew it, the sun was rising, and on the morning of day 7, we had ourselves a lovely flat area in which we can work. I mean, honestly, what more can you ask for? Anyways, after a few days of being focused on the house, I decided to spend day 7 being quite adventurous, so I made my way over to some kind of wooden structure that I saw on the map, and ended up getting beat up by yet another living chest in the process. However, once I arrived at said wooden structure, I discovered it was yet another village. Damn, these things are really super, super common in this mod pack, apparently. Anyways, I ran through and looted everything up and took in the view from the top, which was, uh, which was very nice. And once I'd taken in the view and everything that this village had to offer me, I checked the map again to find yet another village all the way back near the temples. And on the topic of temples, there was a third one hiding amongst the trees. So I marked it off and made my way over to conquer it. But once I arrived, there were a few heavily armoured zombies guarding it, so uh, I tried dealing with them, but they, they hit pretty hard, so I had to carry on this cobblestone box whilst planning out this heist. So I decided to go with the same strategy of breaking in through the bottom, and well, it went just as well as the last one. I went in and broke the spawner and grabbed basically my free loot, and then went around dealing with any rogue stragglers that I'd missed that were still lurking in the tunnels. And boom, just like that, the dungeon thingy was looted, but the guys outside were not letting me off that easy. They started swarming all around me and blocking off my exits, so I geniusly led them to one side of the temple and ran out of the other to make a quick escape. And now, boom, everything is looted and escaped. Time to return home with the spoils and go to bed. Alrighty, day eight. Today is the day that we start work on our new home. Now, if you wanna build this house for yourself, I'll leave a link to the tutorial I followed down in the description. It's super, super easy to keep up with and the house itself looks pretty amazing. Anyways, I worked tirelessly throughout the day and into the night, and by the morning of day 9, we had some kind of structure to the house, and everything went pretty smoothly, except maybe a shortage of marble that was easily solved by just grabbing some more. So yeah, after the restock of marble, I worked on the house for the entirety of days 9, 10, and 11, until finally, by the end of day 11, the sun was setting, and the exterior of the house was more or less done, and looking very, very nice. So I decided to move in on that very night, and uh, well, it was really nice getting a peaceful, quiet night's sleep without the villagers slamming the doors all night. Okay, so after doing a lot of building, I decided to go mining again and uh, go and grab myself some more diamonds so that we can start kitting ourselves out in some diamond armor. And to also grab some obsidian, that way we can head to the nether soon. So it's back to the village we go, but before returning down to the cave, I repaired my pick real quick and now I was ready to go spelunking. Once I arrived back down in the caves, I spotted some diamonds high up in the walls and made it my life's goal to grab them that proved a lot easier than I was expecting. And whilst towering up to them, I noticed some of this blue stone that's just stone, but it's blue. I know, right? It's, it's crazy. Anyways, that's two diamonds down and like 20 something to go. So I made my way back down my janky staircase and began exploring the cave floor when I stumbled across a lush pot that dropped me some torches and well, that was pretty nice, but it was basically nothing compared to the next chest that I found that had some very useful potions in it and a totem of undying. What? It's insane that you can just find these laying around in chests. What? So, um, yeah, I, I yoinked that up as quick as possible and now immediately felt a thousand times safer. I mean, I don't even have one of these in my actual hardcore series world, so uh, it's nice to walk around with one in my hand. More exploring later and I spotted some more diamonds high up in the roof, but uh, when I tried to tower to them, I got jumped by like every mob imaginable. So I dealt with them and began towering to the roof diamonds when I spotted some more in the wall below me. So I mined out the one in the roof, and as I was grabbing some more building blocks, I spotted yet another diamond ore. So I headed down and grabbed the lower ones, and then headed over to get the other ones. But, uh, well, once I got over there, I found, like, three more veins of them, and I really couldn't believe my eyes, because I never get this lucky with diamonds, especially in 1.18. So I'm 100% sure that this pack makes them way more common, but I'm not gonna complain. Anyways, I mined them all, and on my way out, I spotted a golden chest, which I attempted to loot, but this thing was an angry, hungry chest that, uh, well, I tried running away from, but it kept hitting me until I was one shot from death. So I paused the game and thought, what am I gonna do, okay? If this thing hits me, and I pop the totem in my offhand, then it hits me again, I'm gonna die. And this thing hits quickly. 
So I decided to take the risk and unpause trying to block the attack, but I still ended up popping the totem. However, this gave me the opportunity to run away, and run away I did. Surrounded myself in a deep slate cube, cowering, eating a gapple to regen. That was way too close, and I do not know how I'm still alive right now. But I know one thing, alright? I am done being down here. So I carefully mined my way back to the surface in the opposite direction of the angry chest, and uh, as I was making my way back to the surface, my hands were shaking and my heart was pounding. The only thing that saved me was the totem that I found earlier. So on this day, I vowed never, ever to open one of those chests ever again. Anyways, I eventually struck the surface and wasn't too far away from my home, so I ran back as fast as I could, and I really don't think I've ever been happier to see a house in this game. And as soon as I got back, I went straight to bed. And on day 13, when I woke up, I was still feeling a little bit shaken up, so I decided to sort out all of my well-earned loot, and also finished bringing the items over from the village to the new house, when I realised that I never actually picked up any obsidian, but uh, I think that's okay, considering that I almost died to what is essentially a block of wood, I probably shouldn't be in the nether just yet. Anyways, after sorting and smelting all my stuff, I decided to work on the outside of my house for the rest of the day, and I know I should probably do the inside, considering I'm currently using dirt as a staircase, but eh, it works. So I planted some trees, added some water, and made some of these arches that I'm definitely changing the design of later, and then went to bed. So on day 14, I devised a new plan of how I was going to deck myself out with diamonds, and decided that I was going to trade for them instead of mining. So I got to work on building a couple of farms just down the hill from my house, so I could get to making a load of emeralds ASAP. So I planted some potatoes, and some carrots, and some wheat, you know, just the basic three, um, and then after dealing with those, I added some better looking arch things in front of my house, and well, there goes day 14, a pretty boring day just farmed away. So on day 15, I decided to start exploring some more land to open up the map a little bit and hopefully find a couple of dungeons or something along the way. So I set sail across the mini ocean thingy in front of my house, making my way through the larger than life stone arches until I approached some land that was covered in purple trees. And once I arrived on these new lands, I spotted some doggos and a skelly on my map, so uh, I tried to find it to get some bones, but instead ended up stumbling across this pit, so I marked it off on the map as whole thingy, and we shall return there later. Anyways, I ended up finding the skelly in a cave nearby, and gave him a good bonking, and he dropped two bones. So I really quickly grabbed some coal, and then made my way over to the dogs in hopes that two bones would get me one, and I know that's very wishful thinking, because it didn't work. But there was a ravine right next to me, with another skelly down there, so I I made my way down, boofed him, and got one singular bone, returned to the doggos, and had to take a guess at which one I'd tried to tame, gave it another bone, and surprisingly, it worked, so we now have a doggo. Let's go! Anyways, after getting my new friend, I grabbed some of these purple trees and continued my search for stuff when I spotted this floating island thingy. So I made my way up and was surprised to find a mob spawner and a seal up here. Yeah, a literal seal just chilling up here. I have no clue how he got up here, but he's just chilling. So I had a little look around, but heard a load of mobs and decided to leave this place for now and marked it off on the map as floating thingy. And then began making my way back home because it was getting dark and we'd actually accomplished quite a lot today. Anyways, by nightfall, I'd arrived back at my area and brought the currently unnamed dog home with me and went to bed. Okay, day 16. We've made some pretty good progress so far. I mean, if you exclude the fact of getting softlock from diamonds because of a chest, but let's not talk about that. So, on day 16, I actually decided to finish the interior of my house, you know, because using dirt as a staircase wasn't it. And after about 10 minutes of working and tidying, things were looking quite a bit better, and I decided to make an enchantment table. Although I can't really use it right now, at least we have it. And after I placed it down, I saw a message in chat telling me that a blood moon was rising. So uh, I quickly ran upstairs and cowered in my room throughout the night, considering you can't sleep, and I wasn't in any position or the mood to fight anything. Okay, so after getting no sleep, thanks to the blood moon, I got to work on stacking up on my resources so that I could start trading with villagers for gear as soon as possible. So I spent most of the day just farming as much as I could, but considering I didn't have much bone meal, there wasn't super much I could do. And as well as farming, I also cleared out some trees that were near the farm, because, well, they just made everything dark and mobs would hide under there and attack me during the day, so, uh, yeah, we didn't get super much done today, but, hey, progress is progress. Anyways, on the following days, I headed back over to the village with my resources in hand and began revamping the entire thing as a trading hall so that I could organise who was trading me what and put them into nice neat rows. So I set up a row of about four or five farmers, that way we had enough to trade, you know, like actual different things to them and not run out of trades. 
After that, I added a stone cutter at the end because clay to emerald trades are just so OP. And now we have a row of ready to trade villagers and I know it's not pretty but it works and that's all I can ask for at the minute. So I spent a good portion of the following day outside under the river just grabbing as much clay as I could and then bringing it back down to the clay boy right here for those sweet sweet emeralds. Mm -mm. Oh and I also decided it'd be a smart idea to make a Fletcher because I have a load of wood and I could trade sticks for emeralds. And let me tell you, this was extremely lucrative and extremely simple. So I decided to make a second one just so I could keep trading away super easy. Um, but this was actually ridiculously fast to get emeralds, okay? Especially with the rate I can chop trees down. This, uh, it's absolutely crazy. After trading with everyone for a while, I had amassed a decent amount of emeralds, so I set up a trading hub for armor and tools. That way we could start leveling those guys up as we trade with the other ones. You see? Smart boy right here. So, following the design of the previous ones, I lined them all up and tricked them into one into their cells, and then traded with them until eventually we got some diamond armor trades. So I really quick ran down and broke some wood into sticks, grabbed some more emeralds, and boom, we have our first pieces of diamond armor. And so, with the success of getting two pieces of armor and being out of emeralds, I decided to call it a day for now and returned home as night fell. And on day 21, I headed back over to the whole thing we found a few days ago for some reason, um, and went down into the abyss to hopefully conquer it. But well, when I got to the bottom, I quickly realised that this was no dungeon. It was a mineshaft, and a lush mineshaft at that, so that was a pleasant surprise. I thought I'd be fighting for my life, but no, instead I'm mining diamonds. Not bad at all. Anyways, after cautiously making my way around this place, I uh, found myself a couple of chests with some glow sticks and a name tag in them, so not too bad, I do guess the glow sticks are kinda cool. But after looting the chests, I went around grabbing all the visible ore I could see and then made my way back to the surface to find that I'd spent all day down there. But this adventure isn't over yet because I immediately started heading over to the floating island thingy we found earlier to see what secrets lie within. So I made my way inside and headed up the ladders to find a dark, empty room with nothing in its chests. So I moved further up when I heard a load of zombies directly above me and geniusly headed outside to break in the wall to then find a seal. Another seal just chilling in here. What a little cute fella. He's just, he's just chilling. So uh, that means that the next floor is the bad one. Oh yeah, yeah, just take a look at that. That's uh, that's not nice at all. So I dispatched all the zombies, broke the spawner, and got two diamonds and a gapple for my troubles. Not bad at all. Then I proceeded to make my way to the top where there were two more chests waiting for me, but didn't really have much other than name tags in them. So it's not as good as the diamonds, but eh, it's still pretty nice. Anyways, at this point, the sun was rising on day 22, and it was really beautiful up here. So I did what any logical person would do an MLG bucket of myself down to the lower level and then jumped off head first into the water below to head to what I thought was a village and uh, hey guess what it was yet another village except this one was by far the most normal looking one of them all so I went around stealing all their hay bales to sell to my villagers for profit when I spotted a gopher or a squirrel or something just bugging right here and I don't know why, but for some reason that little guy made me think of Obsidian and then made me think about the ruined nether portal that we found earlier. And the fact that instead of mining for Obsidian, I can just get it from that and we don't run the risk of me dying in a cave. It's a win-win. So I finished up at the village and headed over to a wooden shack thingy that ended up being a stable with two horses. I marked it on the map and then began making my way home, bringing a couple of cows and not forgetting to grab the obby from the ruined portal along the way. But let me tell you, it took so long to get these cows back home, they were insanely frustrating, but eventually we got back and I trapped them in this temporary pen and went to bed. Now in the morning of day 23, I spent a while building the cows a real home, that way I could start breeding them as soon as possible. Now the design I went with was kind of similar to my house, but obviously a lot smaller and less detailed, um, and it took a little bit longer than I was expecting, but by the morning of day 24, it was all done, and I managed to get the cows inside and bred by sunrise. Now with the barn thing out of the way, I grabbed all my hay bales and headed back over to the trade hub to start making back some moolah, and to level up my armor guy some more, which I managed to do, and now he sells everything I need. So I picked up the chest plate and then quickly traded some more sticks to grab the helmet, and boom, we are now fully decked out and dripping with diamonds. Anyways, I headed back home and on my way back, tried chopping down a few more of these trees to clear a path, but they're just, they're so big and they're awful to chop down, but um, I did get a blue moon that makes me feel lucky, apparently. But clearly I didn't care that much because as soon as I got back home, I made a lectern and then just went straight to bed. So on the following days, I went out to grab some paper to make some bugs and, uh, well, got scared half to death by these very unfriendly skelly boys. So after regaining my composure, I dealt with them and tried to save a horse, but um, none made it out. After dealing with that though, I did make my paper for bookshelves and then took my lectern over to the village in search of a mending trade. 
And the process of getting a mending tray took a lot longer than I was expecting because I just kept getting all these different cool sounding enchants that I'd never seen before, such as Fire Slash and Thunder Slash. But eventually, I struck the lucky book and got mending. So I traded some more sticks for emeralds, and boom, we now have a mending book. So I headed back home and stored it away, and then went on a mass clay gathering spree so that I could get enough emeralds to buy the remaining bookshelves that I needed to start level 30 enchanting my gear. So I made a new shovel and an axe and got to work digging up all the clay that dared to catch my eye. And then I brought it all to this fine gentleman right here who gave me a lot of emeralds for it which I then used to get the remaining bookshelves. And headed home and considering it was dark I went to bed and on the morning of day 28 I made myself a very basic temporary enchantment area and proceeded to make myself a new pickaxe and then disenchant all my armour to then go and re-enchant it with much higher level enchants. And I got a pretty insane one on my pickaxe, and then my armor came out just okay. Although I didn't have enough XP to enchant my helmet just yet, so I decided to leave it for now, and instead put mediocre enchants on my axe, sword, and shovel. And then put them all to use by doing more landscaping outside my house, because it was feeling very cluttered and messy, and it still just really needed doing. So I made some much needed adjustments, and they weren't even big, it was just quality of life stuff. Anyways, by the end of the day, things were looking pretty nice. Alrighty, so on day 29, it came to my attention that when we raided the floaty dungeon thingy, we actually didn't do it right. You see, there's supposed to be an actual dungeon with loot just underneath it. So I got in my boat and headed back over there, and well, there is indeed a dungeon right underneath, as promised, so uh, I headed in with a new sense of power with my new armor, and well, the poor poor mobs in here did not stand a chance against my wrath. I cut through them with ease. But uh, as I looted things, I really began to realize that the loot down here was actually not that great. So I decided to grab some obby from the walls, so at least I got something useful from this place. Man, this place really didn't have any good loot. But for all I know, this is a super easy dungeon, so I guess that's fair. Anyways, I returned outside and started making my way back home with the little loot that I had. And when I got back, I stored everything away and decided that it was time to light the nether portal and head in just to take a look at where we spawned. Now, we actually spawned in a pretty safe looking place with no big lava pits in sight, so I was happy about that and headed back home and went to bed. And once again, on the morning of day 30, I was feeling pretty damn adventurous, so I looked up a recipe for a backpack and it just so happened that we have enough things to craft it and even upgrade it. So that's exactly what I did and then stacked up on a load of useful resources and set out on another exploration journey. But this time, we were going to do it right. So I ventured out in the direction of the village to see what we could find, and shortly after getting into new chunks, I found myself a hot air balloon and a shipwreck with a treasure map, so I decided to follow that and grab it real quick, bagging myself some pretty decent loot in the process. And then I continued the journey into the unknown when I started getting attacked by a bunch of drowns. So I uh, headed to this little village where I was going to spend the night, but uh, th these guys had their own problems. So I continued on for a little while until I spotted this absolutely insane looking biome. It just looked so amazing. So uh, I spent the night in this little tower thingy with the villagers. And in the morning, I got to work on chopping down some of these trees to bring back home with me. Because, well, they just look way too nice to leave here. Cool trees aside, I then continued my adventure through this strange biome until we hit water again. And I decided to sail through it. But this time, there was really nothing eventful that was happening over here. This ocean was really barren and empty, and the only thing that was really out here was this little raft with absolutely nothing on it. So I continued sailing deep into the night when we found another floaty dungeon thingy and another underground village that looked a lot cooler and nicer kept than the one that I made into a trading hub. So, as is tradition, I went around looting all that it had to offer me and then spent the night there. And in the morning, wasted absolutely no time and made my way up to the floating dungeon and straight to the top floor and then straight down to the dungeon to start looting it. And yet again, the loot was very, very mediocre. So, I grabbed what I deemed decent and then left to start heading back home after a kind of disappointing journey. However, on the way back home, I spotted another one of those giant jungle pyramids and decided to head in and loot it. Now, this went just as easily as the other two did and uh, bagged me some pretty decent stuff as well as a saddle so I can now go and grab a horse. After leaving the temple, I spotted another one shortly after and once again got some pretty decent loot and another saddle, then began making my way back home through the night, stopping off at this village to try and grab a horse, but it didn't go to plan because I got swarmed by zombies, but luckily I got saved by an iron golem and the village guard, so that was nice of them. Anyways, zombie attack aside, I managed to get a horse and then continued on home, arriving back by noon of the following day. I put the horse in the barn slash stable thingy with my cows and then spent the rest of the day sorting out all my storage and loot that I gathered from my many, many days of adventuring. 
Now on the morning of day 36, I started out the day by replacing some of the cherry trees outside my house with the new glowy ones that I found and, well, spent most of the time working on the exterior of the house and the surrounding area because no matter what I tried, I still wasn't happy with it. But let me tell you, okay, all of this landscaping was made so much easier with this vein miner pick, okay? It just tears through absolutely everything. But it did take quite a lot of durability off, so I had to grab my anvil and add mending to it because, well, I did not want to lose this thing. It was way too good. Anyways, I worked on the exterior for a few more days than I was expecting to, but I did make some really, really good progress and got jumped by this skelly boy who I shot from a distance because he hurts and apparently drops no loot. But after dealing with him, I continued landscaping for a while until I was attacked again by these skelly boys. So I dealt with them, but this time I did get a horse. So I put my saddle on it and brought it into the stable with the other one and then got straight back to work. And now you also may be wondering why I'm spending so much time flattening out this land and well the simple answer is I hate how closed off everything felt. Um, and number two, I want to build more things and have like a kind of space compound thing running around here. So I think it's worth the time investment to flatten everything out. Anyways, by the evening of day 40, everything was leveled enough and I decided to call it there and head to bed. And so on the morning of day 41, I harvested my crops, grabbed some wood and headed back over to my trading hub to begin trading again to get enough mending books for all my armor and tools. And to also try and get my hands on some protection for trade so that way I actually stand a chance against some of these modern enemies. But once I arrived at the village, the Iron Golem was far from happy with me for some reason and gave me a good old boof. So unfortunately, I had to give him a good old boofing of my own. But after dealing with that very unpleasant and angry boyo, uh, we got straight to trading for a Protection 4 book. But uh, instead, I actually ended up settling for a Protection 2 because uh, the, I can just combine them all and Protection 4 was just not coming up in the rotation whatsoever. Anyways, after getting my book, I uh, traded all my crops, but mainly sticks. Um, and I mean, it's actually insane how many emeralds and stuff I can get in a short period with how many sticks I can trade. It, it's actually crazy. So I also headed out and grabbed some clay to trade with this man whilst I waited for them to restock. And once they did, I just rinsed and repeated the process until I had enough emeralds to buy my books. So after finishing trading, I headed back home to put all the enchants on my armor when I realized how expensive this was actually going to be. And very, very quickly noticed that I should have probably gone for protection for books instead. Anyways, I did a little bit more trading and eventually we had everything combined and ready to put on our armor. But uh, it was still costing way, way too much. So I just added protection on everything and mending only on my chest plate and called it a day for now because I was sick of hearing all the villagers. Hmm. Alrighty, so on day 43, I decided that it's finally time for us to start making our way through the game. So I headed into the nether in search of a fortress, so that way we can grab some blaze rods. And in the process of making our way throughout the nether, I found a load of different new ores along the way, which I obviously picked up. Now, I did end up mining my way out into the open nether, but immediately got withered by something and decided, you know what, it's back to tunneling underground. When I noticed this kind of temple thingy looking on the map and uh, I decided to add a waypoint to it and head over there cautiously and spotted a chest inside. So I opened it to be greeted by the hiss of lit TNT. So I ran for my life. Now the nether's not a good place in, in, in vanilla game, okay? But this is, this is just rude now, okay? This place is so hostile. So I decided to make my way back to the portal and go out searching in the opposite way when I was attacked by a flying head, but it didn't put up much of a fight. Anyways, I mined for a long time and found absolutely nothing. Even after looking on the map during the process, there was absolutely no fortress in sight. So I decided to take a little pit stop and build another portal right here so that we can continue our journey through the overworld. Because, well, the terrain's not as treacherous and the enemies are not as scary. And yes, I know before anybody says it, I know the overworld is slower, but the nether is boring when you're just tunneling. Anyways, once back in the overworld, I immediately got chased by a bear that I had to dispatch because I wanted some saplings from these cool red trees. So, uh, I'm sorry little guy, um, I'm really not looking forward to your revenge arc when you start coming after me like John Wick. Anyways, I kept running my way through the wilderness for a very, very long time until I approached this very nice looking spot where I decided, you know what, this will be the perfect place to build a portal. So that's exactly what I did, but when I jumped through, it led to a basalt delta and... That's, that's not happening. So I continued our journey through the overworld and almost died to this stalactite or stalagmite or whatever they are, but the spiky and they're in water and in caves. So after making our way through this very red biome and an ocean, I spotted a ruined portal and took it as a sign to head back to the nether. And we actually got a pretty good spawn, so I decided to continue our journey in there. And accidentally found a piece of ancient debris while tunneling, so uh, that's a nice little bonus. 
Anyways, I thought that I spotted a fortress down in the bottom of the map, so uh, I cautiously made my way over to it, and it ended up being one. So I wasted absolutely no time and sprinted through the dark halls of the fortress, searching for a blaze spawner, looting any chests, and dispatching any blaze that got in my way. Eventually, I found a spawner and farmed it out until I had enough rods, and then began grabbing a load of gold that I made into ingots, and then traded with these two fine fellows for ender pearls. Now, that wasn't really needed because apparently there's a load of endermen just chilling in the overworld in this mod pack for some reason, but hey, you know what? I'm here, I may as well do it. So I traded just under a stack of gold ingots and ended up with four pearls, which I think is an absolute scam, um, but I did get a load of fire res potions. So bidding my good piggy friend goodbye, I started making my way back home to the portal, but this time through the nether because it was faster and, well, I really just wanted to get home at this point. After a while of mining myself through this godforsaken place, we finally reached the portal and headed through to see the beautiful light of day once again. Once we actually got back to the base, I um, I literally just sorted out all the loot we got for the rest of the day, okay? We got quite a lot of stuff. And on day 50, we headed straight back into the nether, but this time in search of ancient debris. And now I know you may say to use beds or TNT, but uh, my pick is really OP and it has mending, so uh, just going around mining is a really good idea. So I mined down and got to work on tearing up the nether once again in search of that rare rare ore and this pick just made everything so much easier anyways after breaking around for a while this ender trade guy came up to me bearing goods for an absolute scam of a price uh, he wasn't gonna rip me off so uh, i just ignored him and continued my search until eventually i found our first official piece of ancient debris and it was a two vein too so uh, that was a nice little bonus and it was followed immediately by some more, and then some more, and some more, and then a little bit of some more, and then a blackstone golem that confused me. And then to top everything off, this fine tradesman approached me with much, much better trade offers. So I grabbed some and continued on my mining until eventually we had torn up enough of the nether to find enough ancient debris for a full set of armor and a couple of tools. So I headed back home to smell down my ancient debris, made a smithing table, and then finally made the ingot, put them all together and added them on my armor, put mending on there, and boom, we are now fully decked out, or at least I mean, we are for now, but either way I feel a lot safer wearing full netherite. So on day 53 I did what anyone with full netherite armor would do and spent the entire day just improving my farm. Yeah, an insane, crazy day, very hard day, just, just farming. Anyways, on the following days, I made a brewing stand so that way I could start making some potions and be ready to take on the ender dragon soon. So I got everything I needed set up and made what little pearls I could into eyes and got to work on growing some nether wart. As well as dispatching some endermen for pearls and staying up all night in wait of phantoms, that way I could boop them and grab their lovely, lovely membranes. To start making some slow falling potions. Oh, and during this couple of days, I also worked on like doing up the trading hall properly. So uh, yeah, that came out looking a lot nicer because it was uh, it was a good way to pass the time at night. But whilst working on it, I was approached by yet another trader goblin, and he had pearls for sale. So I grabbed some of them, and finished off making my eyes, and by the end of day 57, we had everything we needed nice and organized in this barrel right here. And in the morning, I grabbed all the stuff I'd need and finally set out in search for the stronghold. So I threw up an eye in the air and followed the direction it told me. Now on my journey, I stumbled across this lone villager just stranded at sea, so uh, I took some stuff from his chest and now he's coming with me to the end. Except he's not because five minutes later I kind of left him stranded in a boat and uh, continued this journey alone on foot. But it started getting dark and raining, so I stopped off at this underground village and spent the night. And in the morning, continued my search. But before we go any further, just take a look at this view I got from the village. It's absolutely insane. Now, I really do want to move over here. Uh, because I really like it, so maybe we'll do it later, or maybe in another video, who knows, but uh, I, I definitely plan on moving here, okay? This thing looks insane. Anyways, continuing on, I actually got really lucky and found a waypoint very close to the scenic village. So that's going to make moving over here an actual possibility. So after a load more walking, the eye told me that I'd arrived. So I made my way down and sure enough was greeted by this massive improved stronghold and began cautiously making my way through the halls in search of the portal room, taking out any mobs or spawners that got in my way until I found what looked to be like a treasure room or something, um, but it had another portal in it, so I went around grabbing all the loot and the ores, and then lit the portal just to mark it off in the nether for future reference. Oh, and I also found an armory with some pretty nice stuff down here, such as this diamond chest plate and this infinity bow that will come in very, very useful very, very soon. Now, I did eventually find the portal room, and it was, like, almost covered in this big amethyst geode right here. It, it was kind of a mess in here, but uh, I added the eyes, and boom! It was now time to face the dragon. 
So I sorted out all my inventory, popped a few potions, and headed in. And things looked a little bit different this time around, but that wasn't going to stop me. So I bridged my way over and immediately set out to destroy all of the towers. And once they were down, I turned my sights to the dragon, and oh boy, I, I, it's got a lot of health this time around, okay? It, this thing just does not die easy. But after landing a good few hits with the bow, it came into perch, and I took the opportunity to get close and give her some good boofs. Although it did get a few good hits on me, but uh, left this phase wounded, and very shortly after, perched again, where I oofed it in some more for some absolutely insane damage, but the coward flew away, and I had to rely on my trusty bow to deal enough damage for it to come down for its last stand. Where I put an end to the dragon, freeing the end, and giving myself a ton of XP in the process. Now, I don't think any mechanics of the fight were different, the dragon just had a decent amount more health, so it took a little bit longer to kill, but other than that, it was a pretty standard fight. So now, after felling the dragon, it dropped some scales, so uh, I grabbed them and the egg, and then started making my way over to the portal to the Outer End Islands to see what adventures await me out there. And as soon as I made my way through, I was surrounded by biomes and plant life that I'd never seen in the game before. It was absolutely crazy. Anyways, I did spot a structure off in the distance and made my way over to it, heading inside, to find nothing. Th there was nothing in here, so I was, I was pretty disappointed by that. I was expecting like a dungeon or something, but either way, I began my search for the end city so that I could get my hands on a pair of elytra. And on my journey, I spotted a fair few weird and wacky things, such as this mineshaft right here and this ship that didn't have an elytra, but it did have this cool looking pedestal that I decided to steal and then continued on our journey until I ended up spotting a couple of ores scattered around. Now, I'd never seen ores in the end and I had no idea how useful or rare they are, so I just stacked up on a load of them and ended up stumbling my way into this very cool looking ender jungle biome with another weird ship, but unfortunately still no city in sight. However, this place was pretty cool nonetheless. But then, just as I was about to give up hope, I spotted this absolutely insane, crazy looking end city off in the distance. And when I say crazy, I mean crazy, alright? Just take a look at this thing, it's absolutely insane. So I headed over to it, and well, this is where things got out of hand very quickly. You see, there was um, there was a couple of shulkers, um, and they got kind of mad, and uh, well, just just take a look at this. This is absolutely ridiculous, okay? There were so many shulkers. I, I, if I knew there was going to be this many, okay, I'd have come more prepared. But anyway, I used their levitation against them to get to the ship, and then got trapped inside there for about five minutes whilst trying to deal with these shulkers without getting shot out at the top, to then be swarmed by another 50,000 from the end city. It, it, was, it was a shamble, okay? It was an absolute mess. But eventually I dealt with them all, and I went down to claim my loot. So I grabbed the elytra and a load of really OP stuff, and ironically stored it away in a shulker. When I realized that the elytra was already decked out with enchants, so uh, that's, a, that's a bonus, I'm not going to complain about that. Anyways, I stored everything away and escaped through the bottom of the ship, making my way back to the portal ASAP. Because, well, the cities in this mod do not mess around. But either way, I ended up making my way back to the portal pretty easily thanks to the elytra, and headed back through to find myself in a village, which I spent the night at prior. So I was expecting this to happen, um, and just headed over to the teleport waypoint that was kind of close, and uh, teleported back to a village near my home. So I boated my way back 700 and something blocks, until finally we arrived back at our somewhat safe house. And we'd actually been out so long that the season had ended up changing while we were gone. So everything looks brown now and I kind of like it. Anyways, after our very, very long adventure, I called it a day and went to bed. And on day 68, I literally just spent all day sorting out my storage and messing around with all the new stuff that I got from the end. As well as crafting myself some brand new and shiny dragon scale armor. As well as a new diamond axe and some wolf armor for my doggo that was now named Goop. Look at this guy. Oh my, he's dripped out. Anyways, on the following days, I decided that the exterior of the house and the surrounding area really needed finishing. So that's exactly what I did. I made some really, really massive changes, and I'll list a few of them off right now as the time lapse plays. So firstly, I got rid of these trees because I really didn't like them anymore, and flattened down a load of land to make room for my pagodas, which were now a thing, and they looked really awesome, but not as awesome as the next idea I had, which was to build a wall around the entire perimeter of the house, creating somewhat of a compound in the middle where inside I can store my enchantment area, a nice nether portal area, and a cherry blossom forest. And I'm sure there'll be a load more really cool things added later but yeah this took me hours upon hours upon hours and uh, a lot of wood okay a lot of wood that continued to become increasingly hard to get considering that the season had changed again and we were now in winter so the trees were just not growing without any bone meal but eventually i managed to get everything done and well just take a look at our new and improved area i think it was definitely worth the time invested 
Now, there is still so, so much more I can do and build here, but uh, all those days of hard work really took it out of me for now. So, on the morning of day 89, I awoke to my very, very beautiful area and decided that it was time to start learning about the end game and some of the new bosses. So, I did a little bit of research and found that we barely scratched the surface of better Minecraft. So, we're not going to get anywhere near everything done in this 100 days, but that doesn't mean that we can't go somewhere such as, mm, I don't know, the Aether. So I flooded the portal and headed in, and as soon as I arrived, I began tearing the place up to build a small, awful looking structure around my portal. That way I didn't get boofed off by any of the cloud whales. Anyways, crummy little portal base aside, I set out in search of one of four dungeons that reside up here in the clouds. That way I could conquer it and take all the spoils of the gods. Well, kinda. You see, there's different tiers of dungeon that will drop different tiers of loot. They start with bronze, and they go to silver, and they go to gold, which will drop the best loot. And I think that they might be another one. I've heard a lot of people talk about another one, but uh, I'm not too sure. I've never seen it, but hey, who knows? Maybe we'll stumble across it on our adventure up here. So I went around searching everywhere I could to find one of these dungeons. Um, and well, my spawn island didn't have any, and the islands around my spawn islands didn't have any, and the islands around those islands didn't have any. Um, and I ended up searching all the way through the night for these dungeons, but I, I genuinely just couldn't find any of them. They, they were completely non-existent. However, I did end up finding these really cool looking trees, which I very quickly yoinked because they just look too cool. I don't know what it is with me and trees with this mod pack, but I just keep, I keep collecting them. I can't stop myself. They look so good. Anyways, by the morning of day 90, uh, things were just not going well, and I still couldn't find any of the dungeons, so I decided to quit while I was ahead, and decided to go back home and just plant all the trees down that I'd yoinked from the Aether, and make a little area out of them that came out looking quite nice. Anyways, on the following days, I decided to make some fireworks, and then just went around exploring the world some more in search of things to loot or kill. And, well, I actually found this ship infested with mobs, so I big-brained it, and uh, just grabbed the loot from the top so the mobs can't get me, uh, um, but it ended up being kind of crappy loot. So I just decided to leave it and continue on to the next thing. There ended up being a little shack in the night snow. Now, there was nothing here, but it looked really nice. However, I didn't stick around long and headed back out until I stumbled across this weird looking woodland temple or whatever it is. I don't know, but it had flowers and it looked nice. So I went down and oh boy, it's a good thing I had this shield because as soon as I got down there, there were so many creepers. It was absolutely insane. There were so many. But the loot down here was pretty decent, so it was worth getting jump scared. So after that fiasco, I found this quaint little village to spend the night, and in the morning set out once again to see what I could find. And ended up finding these trees that dropped a load of apples, so they're really useful, and I grabbed a couple of them. And I also noticed that there was an azalea right here, which means there's a lush cave underneath it. So I headed down to check it out, and stumbled into a mineshaft thingy that quickly became a dungeon, so I, I guess that works. Anyways, I went around dispatching zombies, destroying spawners, and looting chests, and uh, whilst doing this I found a soul star. I have absolutely no clue what this does or what it is, but it sounds cool. But then I almost froze to death, and that doesn't sound cool. Well, in a sense it does, but uh, anyways. This place was absolutely huge, with tunnels that never ended and the sounds of zombies that drove me insane. Now, I did actually end up finding some pretty decent stuff down here, so I guess it was worth the lack of sanity. And the village I spent the night at definitely helped with the lack of sanity with how peaceful and cool and tranquil this place was. And then in the morning, I chopped down a giant redwood tree for some saplings and headed back to the end, because I figured if there's going to be any endgame stuff, it would be in there. And I was right, because I immediately found this mineshaft thingy that didn't have anything in it except chorus fruits and endemites. But I did see some more tunnels in the walls and headed to check them out, but I'm just going to save you the time. There was nothing in them, okay? This, this structure is useless. However, these floating island thingies right here had a load of crystals on them. Now, I don't know if they're good or bad, but I grabbed an absolute ton of them. Anyways, I headed over to this orange biome because it just looked really crazy and grabbed a load of these glowing things and continued my search into this blue biome that had some bouncy trees in it, uh, but not much else. And then I stumbled across another one of those weird structure thingies, however this one had a boss altar thingy at the top of it, so I, I marked it off for later because I couldn't use it right now, uh, and then looked around a little bit more before returning home and heading to bed. And now finally, waking up on day 100, I sorted out some of the loot that I grabbed from the previous days and said goodbye to Goop, and well, this is where I also say goodbye to you. Because that's where things come to an end for this 100 days, but we still have so much more to do, and I'm pretty sure that we'll definitely return to Goop and better Minecraft later to put ourselves to the test once again against the endgame bosses and dimensions. But for now, as always, thank you all so very, very much for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And if you found yourself enjoying the video at any point, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing. 
Also, don't forget to bag yourself some energy over at G Fuel. It's 30% off. Okay, good bargain. Okay, good bargain. Anyways, that's it for me today, peeps. Adios till next time. Stay safe, and I will see you all in the next video.